Hi, it's Judy. I have a fun guided lesson today featuring a few of our pollinators. Using any drawing tool, let's start with bees. Use a circle shape for the head and an oval shape for the thorax and an almond shape for the abdomen. And notice how these shapes overlap. There are over 20,000 species of bees, and I have simplified how we are going to draw our bee today. I have made a shaded triangular shape for the bee's mouth. Bees have a mouth. They can chew things, and some bees have a tongue or a glossa, while the honeybee has a proboscis like the butterfly. I've given my bee two large compound eyes. I'm using angled lines on the thorax to give my bee the feeling of a fuzzy texture. Using a curved line, I give the bee that feeling of roundness and using those stripes on the abdomen, which we all recognize as the pattern for a bee, draw my wings, I'll start with a V at the top of the thorax. I'll draw the wing that is closest to me first, and then I'll replicate that shape on the other side. I'll use two lines to create the antennae. Because each antenna can move independently, these could really be in the position of your choice. The legs are segmented, and like all insects, the bee has six legs, and they all attach to the thorax. Now, I'm going to put the bee on a flower. Start with a curved line behind the bee's feet and create an oval shape. There are so many different types of flowers, and you can use many kinds of shapes. At the center of each flower is pollen and the ability for the flower to create seeds. I have used a long U shape to create the petals of my flower. I'll use two lines to create the stem and a wavy line for the midsection of the leaf and then a curved line or an angled line or a wavy line for the leaf shape. Now, I'm going to do everything we just practiced again, but smaller. Making this be smaller will make it feel like it is in the background. I'm also drawing it in the other direction. And if we have had the pleasure of making art together before, you'll remember the power of the line. With only one line, I will add depth and space into this drawing. My second line is to add a mountain. And choose an interesting spot for your son. Great job! And now on to butterflies. You'll see I'm using similar shapes that I used for the bee although the abdomen of the butterfly will be longer and thinner. I'm using a spiral to draw the proboscis of the butterfly. The proboscis is like a straw, and it's how the butterfly feeds itself, whether drinking nectar from a flower or water from a puddle. I'll use curved lines to create the butterfly's antenna. There are many kinds of butterflies and many types of wings, but they all connect to the thorax of the butterfly. Now I'll use all the same steps to create a butterfly in the side view. From the side view, you'll be able to see the butterfly's wings differently. I will add the compound eyes onto the butterfly, leaving a white highlight. I'm going to start the flower shape next and come back and do the wings and legs. I'll draw an oval shape near the face of the butterfly and another oval shape around it. The lines are kind of wavy and it almost looks like a sunny side up egg. 
This is the opening of the flower, and to show the base of the flower, I'll use a U shape. I'll use some curved lines coming out of the center of the flower to be the stigma or stamen. And I will uncoil the proboscis of the butterfly to make a straightish line as if the butterfly is drinking nectar from the flower. The flower is close enough that I can attach my butterfly's legs to it. I'll draw two wing shapes from the side view and I will only draw part of the other wing because I cannot see it all. I'll add the antenna and a stem to my flower and some leaves. Did you know that a butterfly tastes with its feet and can smell with its antenna? I've created another flower using the same shapes that we used to create the first flower. Now it's time to go back and put patterns or designs in the butterfly's wings. Bees and butterflies are part of a group of insects and animals called pollinators, and they are responsible for pollinating 75% of our crops. That's everything from fruits and vegetables to cottons we use for clothing. The shapes I am choosing on one side of my wings, I try to copy on the other side of my wings. Have fun making up your own designs and patterns. To finish this piece off, I'm going to use the power of the line in the background. Using just that line immediately creates depth in this drawing. Let's add a house in the background. And something we've done before is using two lines from that horizon line to add to the feeling of depth. The lines are closer together at the door of our house and as they come down to the bottom of our page, they grow wider apart. And another wavy line in my background gives me a mountain and make your sun any size and put it any place in your sky. I am so proud of you. Color in your drawing with crayons or markers. And if you would like to see more pollinators, plant flowers. Thank you for joining me. I love the art you make.